Okay, so let's talk about something very important, left behind children. And uh, as Tosca said in the beginning there, uh, there's a lot of migrant workers, migrant families. We are also migrants somehow, we're moving here. But here we're talking about mainland China. People are actually moving from maybe their village, maybe their small city, to look for work. And when they're moving, they're not moving with their children in most cases. They are leaving one single parent, maybe both parents are leaving. And they come to look for work. And normally they end up in factories as workers there or in construction. So when that happens, what do they do? As I said, they're leaving their children behind. If you're lucky, they will stay with grandparents. If you're still lucky, maybe they will stay with some friends or relatives. If you're really unlucky, they have to stay by themselves. They have to stay by themselves. That means if you're six years old, eight years old, 10 years old, you have to live like an adult. There's no other way because you need money to survive. So to move on here, I want to show you quite a numbers here. I want to actually ask people here if you know what these numbers represent. We're not going to go through all of them, but if I say 61, is there anyone here who knows what 61 represents? Sixty-one million left behind children in China. I come from Sweden. This is six times our population in one country of left behind children. Then I moved to 2.1. Any idea? Say again. You're close. 2.1 million are the children that stays by themselves. 2.1 million. They live by themselves. No one to take care of them. Then 75% of these left behind children, no matter who they stay with, they see the parents if they're lucky once a year. Normally they get phone calls and Chinese near it. Maybe they will see them. So 41, any idea? We had a very courageous boy over there, right, Felix? So anyone else who dare to try? Okay, 41 million, of course. But turn it around, 68% of these left behind children underachieve in school compared to the ones that have the parents with them. Then 46% are the ones that actually experience violence in school of these left behind children. So it's a huge, huge problem here in China. Government knows about it, but everyone can do something. So let's imagine that you are now migrant workers. You're going somewhere to look for a job and you will or you want to bring your child with you. What challenges will you face? First, when you come and let's say you work in a factory, normally the factory will give you a dormitory to stay in but it's not a private room. You can share that room with probably five other people. So six people in one room, there's no space for a child. If you come as a couple, if you're lucky, you get a room for yourself. If you're unlucky, you split as a couple, gender-wise. So that's one. Then schooling, hukou, is very important in China. Hukou is something is where you are registered in the, uh, we'll say in your home city or home village. If you go to another city, because the migrant workers are not intending to stay there that long, maybe a couple of years to make enough money, they will not go into school so easily. They will not be uh, prioritized. Then the last one is the working hours. When you go and look for work, you get a job, you're happy, the owner most likely will ask you to work very long hours, 12 hours. 12 hours or more per day. If you're lucky, six days a week. If you really also want to make more money, you work seven days a week. So when can you actually take care of your child? There is no time. So if you can't fix the working hours, then there's no point of doing anything because you won't have any time to spend with them anyhow. So what we did when I worked, uh, we actually managed to fix the working hours. 
So let's say a couple of years ago, actually all factors are living up to the legislative working hours and overtime hours. That's why we could do this. So we formed this project called iHome. I is for the individual and home is to bring the family together. It started like, a, you could say, a social initiative, but it actually became much more than that at the end of the day. But the initial was a social initiative. So we looked at these three challenges. Dormitory. We had a lot of talks with factories that have a lot of migrant workers, right? What can we do? Can we encourage you as a factory owner to actually build dormitories for couples and families if you bring the child down? So we encouraged them and they actually did that. And by encouraging them, of course, we tried to help them as well, right? So we said, if you do this, 20 rooms we will furnish for you. So that was one thing that we looked at. Then the schooling. We as a company don't want to own this, this initiative. We want the factory to own this. Because when they own it, they have the loyalty from their workers. They have the direct communication with their workers. We were a buyer. That's very, very different. So they were encouraged to go and talk to the local schools to make space because they're a powerhouse in that local community. They're a big company. They have opportunity to actually make the difference and really work with the schools here. Then the last one, even though you have normal working hours, you still know that the kids probably get home before you do. So what do you do? We started up an after school center. So we said, if you start this up and you actually employ someone to take care of this, we will furnish that for you as well. And here, just an example of how on the left side is how it normally looks in a dormitory. This is actually for a family. And what we try to inspire them also to, you can make it different. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but they can make a huge difference if you actually make something else out of it instead of the normal traditional way. And here are some examples of uh, after school centers at the factories also. So where kids can go, they can spend time, they can do their homework, they can uh, do activities because there are always people there managing or taking care of them. And or they can just hang out, right? Play some games with friends and do other things, right? So when this all this happens here, we also learn a lot of things. And I think except bringing the family together, I would say factory owners actually re rediscovered something that they have lost for a while. The people value that actually workers are people as well. If you go back in time, a few years, 10 years maybe, Factories needed workers for one reason only, to make more money. So it became a tool for them to make more money. Now it's not that easy anymore. Young generation don't want to do this work unless you do something different. So by doing this project here, they came back to normal values. They understand that they're human beings we are dealing with. And if we can do something for them, they will also pay something back. They will be very loyal to us. There's one story I want to uh, actually share with you. There are many stories, but one particular that actually really touched my heart when I actually heard it. One couple, they had two daughters, and uh, they could only afford to bring one of them, one of two daughters. You can just imagine how that feels for the second daughter that was not chosen. First, I could not move. Now when you say I can move, I can't move because you picked out a daughter. First, I will be angry with my parents, and I will be angry with my, my sister, right? So when this came out, the owner actually stepped in and said, no, you're not allowed to do this. I will pay for your second daughter. So whatever money you need to bring her down, I will pay for this. This is the human value. And this is not coming out if you don't do a thing like this. Then you have an, another part, of course, is the loyalty that comes with all this. When you do something, no matter you want to bring your child or not, the loyalty comes in. I, I put a little bit of business language, a retention rate. But loyalty, that's what it is, right? You do something for me, I will do anything for you. Oh, you, I don't really want to move down my daughter here or my son, but I will do anything for you because you're a good person. So it's a fantastic change of attitude in those factors. And then, this is very much appreciated by the local governments. They want more initiative where factories take better care of their workers. 
but also it's like taking a rock, you throw it in a pond, what happens? You get these ripples, right? Other factors have to do something, and that's the beauty of it. You don't tell them what to do, but they still have to do something. Because if one factor does something like this, all workers want to go there and to work. So I better do something if I want to keep my workers, right? And then the last one is bringing families together, right? Because what's the main purpose, right? So thank you for listening. <laughs>